who better to break it all down than British financier Jonathan Moulton. He's the founder and chairman of Better Capital, managing £210 million and specialising in buying out distressed companies. Jonathan, welcome to the programme. Very quickly, let's get a comment about what's going on in Washington. It's turning into a farce without much comedy, right? Yeah, I think you've got it pretty well summarised. Um, it's very, very stressful if, it, if they don't reach an agreement. Uh, it must be sort of 90% they will reach an agreement, but if they don't, the abyss opens. Now, Britain, we're getting the GDP figures out today. Growth is staggering along. What sort of shape are we actually in? You're working at the coalface. Oh, yeah, and I charge around the UK. And outside of the South East, there's no question there is no growth. It's going backwards. The South East may be just about ascendant, just the area around London particularly, uh, but it's really quite bad out in the regions where it's going down. It feels very feeble. We haven't got the private sector motor to grow. That's the reality. And you've got big concerns about the state of the UK's debt, despite the austerity measures that we're getting from the government. Well, the austerity measures feature at the moment increased spending this share. Um, their retreat from the spending cuts that were threatened for this year, now the low growth, that actually means that we're heading towards a situation where the deficit, which was forecast, I think, at 122 billion in the budget, uh, looks like it might actually be a damn sight near 150, and the markets haven't got that yet. That's more than last year. So, first year of the cuts, deficit rises. It's not a good message for the capital markets. So, you're waiting for a shock? To I, the think, I think when that penetrates, uh, the markets are really going to start looking sceptically at the UK. Instead of Spain or Italy, we'll start to get an eye on us. Well, we know that it's the high street that is really suffering at the moment. We've lost big chains over the past few weeks. Jane Norman, Habitat. When people see you, do they look to you as some sort of white knight that can come charging in? But what's your gut feeling as, as far as British retailing is concerned? Would you touch some of these distressed companies? We, the we, look, we, look, we looked hard at Jane Norman. Um, but many of them... Uh, we looked at Saints too. Many of the high street chains we looked at um, really are in terminal slow decline. They're losing out still to out of town sites rather than the traditional British high, site, high street, but they're losing out more rapidly to the internet, all against a background that the UK consumers got diminishing disposable income and consumer spending in the UK is actually lower than pretty well any European country at the moment. So you're not really interested in, in retailers at We're the moment? We're looking at retailers. There will be the odd deal to be done. We do turnarounds. So really we're looking for something which is a decent business with something wrong with the way it's being managed. You like luxury. We Rich like... people have a bit more money to spend. Tell us about your yacht deal. Uh, well, we've uh, recently uh, taken control of Fairline, uh, which is an upmarket boat business, um, half million, one and a half million boats. Uh, that's a company where there's very obvious scope for actually taking cost out rather than relying on demand. Uh, but demand is still remarkably strong for high-end boats. Are you looking more at any, any, anything else than the luxury sector at the moment? Yes, we are. Can you tell us? No. I <laughs> didn't think you would. But when you're seeking out a new investment, what is your strategy? What do you look for? You, say, you think, yes, that's working well, I can work with that. What sort of things do you look for? Well, Better Capital only does turnarounds. So mm. we're looking for companies where they need change. Frequently it's strategy, frequently management, sometimes really radical things, eliminating parts of the business, closing countries, closing product lines. Uh, changing the method of marketing, dramatic change, so that we can take it from an operating loss to an operating profit quite quickly. And has there been a, has a sort of change in climate in the sense that you might have gone in in previous years when the administrators have, call, have been called in? Or are you now seeing that management is calling you in before they get to that stage? Because presumably that's easier for you, right? Uh, well, it's great if they would, but they don't. They don't. Um, the companies in trouble normally only scream when they're really hurting. So, yeah, most of our deals are done in a matter of days. We spoke to you a few, about a year ago and you said that your business would really get healthy when rates went up and more companies failed. Because at the moment, many are being able to bumble along because rates are low. It's, it's staggering. It's not just uh, Greece and Portugal and Ireland that are sort of staggering along and probably. Uh, all over Europe, we've got very low rates of bankruptcy. Uh, Greece is running at about a ten, a ten year low on its bankruptcy rate. Ireland's the lowest in Europe. The UK is running at a quarter the rate of bankruptcies of the, of the early 90s. So if rates take longer 
to go up, as they might, g given the economic weakness you're forecasting. What does that mean for you? You just well, sit on your hands a little well, while What's longer? happening at the moment is that essentially Darwin isn't operating in the corporate world. The weak corporate models, the declining businesses, aren't being finished off by high interest rates, by the normal laws of the jungle. So what we've got is an increasing number of weak business models staggering along in the economy. But it's, it's better that, surely, than failed businesses all along the path when we're yeah. trying to grow. I disagree grow. with you there. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, total rubbish. Um, the, um, <laughs> the reality is we definitely want to have an efficient economy. So if people, good people working in a bad business is a waste of a good person. On that front, would you have let Greece fail if you were the European Union leaders? Well, I mean, it's, when you say let it fail, it's hardly what you'd call a flaming success at the moment, is it? <laughs> uh, and it's definitely going to default again. Greece has defaulted, been in default 200 of the last 400 years. It first went into default before Christ was born. Um, they, they'll do it again. What do you do now, though, with Ireland and, and Portugal? <laughs> do, do you expect to see more contagion? Yeah, I do. I don't see how it can be avoided. Europe as a whole, with the noble one or two minor exceptions like sort of Estonia, they're all still running deficits which they can't finance, debt levels which are historically extremely high, and you can't solve long term the problem of too much debt with more debt, which is all that's being done all over the place. It defers the pain, but when the pain comes, it's heavier. Arguably, there's an, there's an editorial in the FT this morning saying that what's happened in Greece may actually lead to a worse outcome rather than a better outcome, it just deferring it. That's politically popular, but it's actually wrong for the economies. We need to get back to somewhere near income equals expenditure. It's hideously difficult to do. The UK was going to do it by growing at something like 3% a year. Well, it ain't. That's not happening. So the debt's continuing to stack up. One day we're going to wake up, the markets won't like British debt. British debt will rise in rates, and then the deficit goes wrong in a spiraling mode. That's the risk that we sit in front of us, and it comes. We need to actually be doing more cuts, not less, and endure a dip in economic activity while those cuts go through. The one or two economies have actually tried to cut the way out, but they're very small ones. Uh, but it's extremely successful. Fastest growing economy in Europe in the first quarter, Estonia, the only one that's really cut itself to ribbons. Okay, Jonathan, we've got to leave it there. Jonathan Morton, really good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Terminal right. slow decline. Mm. That was the, uh, <laughs> the news line out of that one.